Hi everyone, my name is Anne. Thanks for joining me on Art on the Creek. I am really happy that you're here with me today in my home studio in Parker, Colorado, because I thought it's time that we look at a different way to paint something white. It's kind of a challenge, it can be a challenge, but not if you look at it the right way. And I've also got a fun coupon for you to try some new things. Are you ready? Let's get started. So I'm going to be using my uh, Mission Magello Gold single pigment paints today. I've had them on my desk for a while and I'm really enjoying them. So I'm just going to continue with that. Um, here they are all swatched out. So I will try and call the colors off when I'm painting them. So you'll know what I'm reaching for and you can find something similar in your situation. Um, there's something else I want to share with you. I have been shopping uh, through Etsy with a wonderful store called Aquarelli Art. And I've got a couple more videos of hers. Well, of mine where I feature her products <laughs> and I will put a link to that playlist up here. There's a coupon code. It is AN15 and if you purchase any of these sample size sets or anything for that matter from her Etsy shop, you can get 15% off. And the set that I have today that I want to use on our painting is this Schmincke Super Granulating Haze Colors set. I have done a lot of reviews on the Schmincke Super Granulating Colors. If you want a specific review on this set, let me know in the comments and I will definitely do that for you. Uh, yes, I have a granulation playlist. Sorry, I had to think a minute and um, I'll put a link to that up here as well. So here you go. We're going to use these and the single pigments. And what are we painting, you ask? Well, cotton. This is a picture that I drew and I just love it. This is just a ballpoint pen and I colored it in with uh, colored pencil. I did it a couple years ago and I just really love the way it turned out. So I've got a different picture for us though today because I couldn't find the source for this one. And I thought, you know, it would be so fun to paint cotton. So let's give it a shot. I was thinking that we could use some of these granulating colors to really accent the texture and the shadows. Here's our reference photo. We're not going to do the entire array of cotton, although you could. Uh, but today what I want to focus on is just a couple bits of it. All right. So when you're drawing, uh, something like cotton where you don't really have uh, you know it's 3d but you don't have a whole lot of shadows to work from look for things that surround it so let's just start by drawing this cotton ball that i want to feature it's got the little husk on the outside here and there's another husk in here And I hope you can see these. I'm trying to sketch really lightly because, um, because it's cotton and I don't want the pencil lines to show up too, too much, but I will try and get this to where you can see it. It looks like each little plant has four little cotton balls. I just think that's adorable. What else do we have going on here? There's a leaf that comes here. I'm gonna kind of exaggerate this leaf. And let's make it here. And then we've got a really fun backside of a leaf that comes up here. Let's see, I suppose we should put this on a branch, give it some context. And I think I'm going to add this one more leaf up here. We have our branch just kind of going off. Give a little bit of interest and bend to it. And let's put this leaf in over here. Do, 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 do. I like this one that's kind of out of focus. We'll have it coming down this way. This is a really fun thing to do because you can pick and choose what you want to include in your painting. It's your painting. You can make it appear however you like. And I'll use a little bit of an eraser here 
just to kind of clean out that leaf. There we go. So we've got cotton, leaf, leaf, leaf. And let's see here. We'll just kind of fill in the background with some out of focus things. I like the, uh, the little cotton ball that's down right below this one. The husks are so interesting. This one kind of has a, a triple leaf, what it looks like anyway, to it. And then some other little husky bits down here. And then finally this one here. with another fairly large husk coming this way. And a little bit coming up here and here. And let's see, this comes down this way. And let's see, I think that's enough of a focal point for now. Let me zoom in here so that you can see what I've drawn. And if you need to pause the video and get caught up, that's totally fine. I've just got the bare minimum in here. But what I've got so far is three leaves and three balls of cotton. So let's get started. This will be fun. I'm going to work with these paints over here that are single pigment, like I mentioned. And I think what I'm going to do, make sure this is really taped down. I'm using 100% cotton B watercolor paper. It is six inches by nine inches. I'll put the link to everything I'm using in the description. Uh, pick this one up off of Amazon and I really, really like it. I think what I'm going to do is start by getting my paper wet. This is just some water. So let's spray that on there. And this time I'm gonna try just leaving it like that. I'm not really going to uh, spread it around. So with this uh, number eight brush here, I'm using a number eight round. I've already got some green over here on my palette and I want to say it was a mix of this cobalt green and green gold. Makes a really nice textural green. So I'm going to just dip into that that I've already got and let's go ahead and just add some of this, some of the leaves in. Now I'm not going to be super definitive with it yet. I really just want this to just kind of give me a, uh, a little location for some leaf action. And, and uh, we're going to go ahead and just add a little bit of those two colors separately on top of each other at various locations in the background. And because we've got a wet background, they will work to spread around and uh, maybe create some cauliflower blooms or back runs so it'll have some good interest for us. So that's all I want to do right there with that. And now I'm going to go into the uh, red brown, which is, you could use a burnt sienna. And I'm just going in the darker parts of these holes, just getting those filled in. Now I'm going to go into the yellow ochre and I'm going to go right next to that red brown. Nope, I missed a I missed a hole over here. And I'll go ahead and add some of that yellow ochre. And now we'll use the burnt sienna and uh, just kind of draw this little branch in here. And I'm gonna go over that branch in some of the green just to kind of give it a real natural look. Just letting these colors blend together. Now 
Now, I know that I've said this before, um, but it does bear repeating. Watercolor loves water. I know that doesn't sound like a, you know rocket science, but you it, it is something that's good to remember because when you are uh, working with watercolor, if you've got water for it to go to, it will flow. So what I want to do now is work on some of these uh, little background pieces here to create some interest in the background. And I'm going to use this haze set for it. I've got the uh, haze pink, haze blue, haze indigo, a haze brown, and haze black. And what Aquarelli Art does with her Etsy page is she buys these full sets and then divides them up into the most adorable portable little sample sizes. These are quarter pans and she fills them by hand so neatly and then puts a little magnet on the bottom of it. So this is the same size as a small mint tin. I have an Altoids tin here. It'll fit in your pocket. It'll fit in your hand. It'll fit just about everywhere you need it to fit and it's metal so it is magnetic and you can use this for mixing area. You've got everything you need. I want to put some of this in this uh, in this wet area while I've still got time here and again yeah, I can re-wet it so it's not a problem. But at any rate I want you to check out Raquel's shop on Etsy because she gives you this all packed out, all ready to go. All of the light fastness is here, the transparency versus opacity, the staining versus non-staining, um, and all of the key to all the information is back here. A non-staining staining is a triangle, and the transparent versus opaque is a square. So you get this little card with every set you purchase. You don't have to invest in the whole set, and I guess what I really like about these kind of specialty watercolors is that you really may not want a full tube of the whole set. So this is a really good way to go. A quarter pan is gonna last you a long time. So I'm gonna start by going into the pink. And I'm gonna let this merge. Now the thing with granulating watercolors is they do need a lot of water to really do their thing the best that they can. So these are gonna have some opportunity here to flow around and mix with what I've already got going on and I may have to re-wet some of this. But these pigments, can you see this already? This is starting to separate and it really just looks cool. I'm gonna just give everything another squirt just to keep that paint moving. If you're looking for a water bottle for your, uh, for your art, there are so many that you can get and the, some of them have different types of uh, spray so that might be something that interests you let's put in some of the blue like for instance some of the sprays are adjustable with, with the blue the contrast is going to be more so i'm going to put, put this closer to the white that's one way of dealing with painting with white is that you're going to be able to take the contrast of what you're doing in the background and make that white stand out so i'm going to kind of concentrate the blue and the darker pigments closer to the cotton Let's see here. Let's put a little bit of that brown in here as well. I'm in love with this pink. Woo! All right, now for the hard part. I think what I want to do is let this dry. And right through the middle, I've got a pretty significant puddle there, so I am going to use some paper towels to help sop that up a little bit. So I'm just going to fold the paper towel and very gently set it in the water so that it lifts it up. And if it ends up lifting more than you want, you can go back and tap more color in. Watercolor really is very forgiving. A lot of people will tell you that it's a difficult medium. I would say it's challenging. Uh, I wouldn't say it's difficult, but I would say it's challenging. You, for me, when I first started watercolor, I had to kind of unlearn 
what I had already learned uh, through painting with uh, gouache. So as a transparent medium, you just have to handle it just a little bit differently because we always work light to dark. That's what we're doing here is we're getting our, our palest values in. It's just kind of looking for puddles here. And this paper, I've just got it taped to my table. You can tape it to a board so that you can tip it around and move things. Um, let me just kind of coax this around a little bit because I want this blue up here just a little bit more. I like what's happening here where it's leaching onto the leaf and I really like this area. This looks pretty. I think that is just about good. That is a lot of water. A lot of water, Chicky. Taking on water. I may go in with a heat tool and go ahead and dry it because I really like what's happening right now. That's another thing with, uh, with watercolor. If you want to stop the action and freeze it where it is, these guys come in very handy. All right, there we are. I think I've got that nice and dry. The heat released the adhesive on my washi tape, but that's fine. So, so far, I really think these granulating pigments are doing us a lot of favors. I love all of the characteristics that are appearing. Let me just zoom in here so that you can really see these. I think this part down here is really fascinating. And then we can move up. All of these greens and yellows are, the green and yellow rather, are mixing. The blue next to the cotton ball here is going to help it stand out. This one has some green next to it to help it along. And then finally, sorry, this is getting a little crooked with my camera there. All of these up here to suggest further shadows in the background. So we got a little bit of a background here, but that's okay. We're just going to go ahead and let that stay. Back to our picture, back to our reference photo. Let me pull that up again. And let's look, let's work on some of these leaves first. We'll go back into this green. This time, I think what I'm going to use, I want a gold, this gold is very clear. This one, I want to be, a, I want it a little more muddy. So I'm gonna use the yellow ochre. And I'll start over here. There you go. Sorry for the random clutter in the shot. Uh, but I'm using yellow ochre over here on my palette and I'm mixing it in with that green. So the green that I'm using is this cobalt green and I'm mixing it with yellow ochre. So if you have those shades at home, definitely you can use those. And the first swipe that I'm going to do is kind of just all throughout the entire leaf here. So since watercolor is a transparent medium, we have those first layer of color down and it really is beneficial because it will show through the, the layers that we continue to put down. So let's see, let's do that same mix for, um, for our leaf over here. And I'm just putting a light wash of this on, kind of a thin wash. And then finally, this leaf over here, I'm just gonna add a touch more of that cobalt green to the yellow ochre. I want it to be a little bit darker over here. Particularly on this side. Now while this leaf here is still wet, I'm gonna go in with just the cobalt teal and come along this edge here. Cause that will help us to establish a shadow. A little too much water on there. When you get too much on your painting, you can use a, what we call a thirsty brush. So get your brush wet, blot it off, and then pass it over whatever you'd like to lift off.
There we go. And those pigments will blend naturally on the paper. And let's see, this one in the back has a little bit more yellow ochre mixed to it. Mixed in, rather. So let's see, I'm going to put this on here. And we'll go back in with just a touch of that cobalt green because there's a little shadow in that leaf that goes right up here letting that dry naturally and over here we'll pass it one more time with this yellow ochre and cobalt green mix and then with just the cobalt green let's see I want to make sure yeah it looks like There's really just a suggestion of these center veins. And we'll t continue this cobalt green down to the stem. Coming back in with our burnt sienna. And we'll add the stem. Now this green has to be coming out of the stem, so we're going to kind of blend those two together. And I'm starting with burnt sienna on the bottom. The bottom portion of this twiggy branch. It'll have that leaf curling up. And then I'm going to take the burnt sienna over here and I'm going to mix it with that cobalt green again. is to get a really dark, moody brown. And we'll come over this. So by putting the darker color up on top, I'm not trying to, to suggest a light source because in this particular drawing, it's so soft and so blurry. Um, I really just wanted to evoke the feel of that cotton rather than uh, harsh shadows that you would normally have with a light source. All right, I think this leaf needs just a touch more dimension. So I'm just tapping into that cobalt green while this is still wet. And let's just coax that pigment on this side here. There we are. Now let's see with this leaf over here we all we want to focus on that yellow mix. Yellow ochre is a great color to to use to put over other washes. I know that in watercolor we do go light to dark. However, yellow ochre is one of those that I never have a problem putting over a, um, a wash that's already there. And of course, as an additional tip for you, this is damp still, so that will help. All right, now let's take a look. I'll lift off some of this. I'm having some issues with too much water here. There we are. Now for this guy here. We'll do some more of the yellow ochre mixed with that cobalt green. And we're just going to add those little veins in the leaf. Now this is just a suggestion of what they look like. You don't have to uh, be real exact in your, uh, in your interpretation of those, those leaves. I'm just kind of suggesting that, that the lines are there. And in fact, I might go back and do these in a darker color. Here we go. Just really being quite light with that. And then I think what I'm going to do is put some of this green on here a little bit more in some places. just to have that uh, this leaf really have a lot of interest to it. This one too I think needs a little more going on.
All right, now for the cotton balls. This is where it gets really fun. I'm going to take my water and it's not completely clean. It doesn't have to be clean. I'm going to just fill in this area here where this first cotton ball is. And with the I think with the haze pink we'll go in there and I'll start putting a very few shadows right along the edge there and then I'm just going to spread it out with my brush. So I'm coming along here with this haze pink and if you don't have this color you could use Daniel Smith Moon Glow, uh, Shadow Violet. You could use a, a regular light blue or light purple. You could use Imperial Purple. Anything like that would certainly work. I'm not putting a lot of pigment down. Just trying to create a shadow. and keep this main part of the ball free of paint. There we are. Now we'll do the same thing to the other two. Don't want it to spread too, too much. Just want to give it a little bit of interest here. Alrighty. That I think is all for our granulating paints. We're going to just let that sit for a while. And I think what I'm going to do is go in and finish up the, uh, the little bowls. I'm going to go with the yellow ochre first and just make sure that we have this down. And then with that red brown, I'll come back and add a little bit more. Just dropping that in, still wet on wet. adding some of that to the stem and the leaves just trying to repeat the colors wherever I think that they would look like it would make a better connection I think I'll put some of this stem down here Now I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and dry this. I like where it's headed and I want to stop that water that watercolor from working. Now we have something we need to do is called softening the edges. I think what I'm going to do is go around each cotton ball with a wet brush and I'm intentionally going past the cotton. I'll add a little bit if I need to here. Daniel Smith Lunar Violet would be another good one to use on this. But when you soften edges, all you need to do is just take your brush and just agitate the pigment around the edge there. And in this case, we're going to just add a little bit more of a shadow. Try not to outline it. We definitely want it to look natural, but these shadows are a part of that. You're just kind of blending these edges together so that it doesn't look so cut and paste. This one, was that the blue, the second one? 
Need a little more blue over here, I think. There, I think that's going to be just fine. couple little checks that I want to do here. I don't like this hard line here, so I'm going to go in and loosen that up. And then what you can do is come in with a rag or a paper towel and just blot that up a little bit, and that will help to create a smoother edge. Same thing as over here. I kind of got a little, little hard line there, so I'm just gently agitating it and blotting it up. This one I might just drop in a little bit more pigment. I need something right in here for sure. All right, now let's go ahead and finish up these, these little balls here. By using the heat tool there along the tape as you're taking it off, even if you're using low tack tape, it will help to preserve your paper because sometimes after this tape has been sitting there for a while, your paper uh, can just adhere a little too much to the tape and then when you remove the tape, it'll, it'll tear the paper a little bit. So just keep that in mind to use the heat tool as you're pulling that tape off and uh, do so at a 90 degree angle and that will be much easier on you and your paper. So here we have it guys. Here is a rendition of cotton how to do something white on white i have another video here that uh, i'll link at the end of the screen to show you a different approach to painting something that's white but until then have a wonderful week thanks for hanging out with me you guys we'll see you next time bye, -bye.